Engel and Richard Truly uh, getting set uh, to go into space with the Space Shuttle Columbia for the second time. That electronic gadget that had a problem yesterday has been fixed. The rocket is fueled and all is ready. And we are here with special Good Morning America coverage, special ABC News coverage of the launch of the Space Shuttle Columbia. Deke Slayton, the Orbital Flight Test Director, will be with us in this half hour. So will Gene Cernan, Frank Reynolds. Uh, we are here, we are ready, and the excitement is building for the Space Shuttle Columbia to go into space for the second time. Senator Harrison Schmidt, former astronaut. Uh, he was the lunar module pilot on Apollo 17, uh, spent four days on the moon. Uh, he is with us for our special coverage. It's good to have you with us, Senator. I tried to spend four days. You'd only let me spend three. He would. It was his fault. <laughs> now, the other guy sitting here is Deke Slayton. Deke is the orbital flight test director for the Space Shuttle launch. She's one of the bosses and is calling some of the shots here. Deke, good morning. Nice Thank to you. see you good this morning. Good to see you, Deke. Really great. Thank you. Senator, first of all, good morning. Good morning. morning. Uh, first of all, you had dinner with uh, Engel and Truly last night right. and breakfast this morning. How yeah, are they? What meal, they have to say? Free meal anywhere you can get it. <laughs> How no, are they're they? just in great shape, and uh, they were a little bit anxious last night because we were waiting for that checkout of the uh, MDM, as it's called, the An electronic, electronic gadget. box. Okay. Uh, to uh, and that, of course, went beautifully last night. Deke will know more about that than I. And uh, this morning they were uh, up and around at the right time. Looked like they had a good night's sleep. Uh, Engel was wondering why he wasn't hungry, and we explained that to him. Uh, any time Engel's not hungry, we know that he's interested in what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> but they got some extra sleep, didn't they? Because uh, they uh, well, were going to get actually, up originally at 2.40 for uh, a 7.30 uh, launch. So actually, they, they, uh, uh, David, they, uh, I think, went to bed a little bit later. They did? Yeah. So uh, they're up and uh, they're ready to go. A little birthday party beside Yeah, and Dick... Did they uh, eat any the cake? Yeah, they had cake and the, uh, <laughs> the gals had uh, some beautiful candles on the cake, got them all lit up truly blew them out and they all lit up again, you know, those uh, crazy candles that you can buy, and he got taken by that one. <laughs> Deke, tell us, what's the status right now? We're in a hold for one hour, started about uh, 40 minutes ago, and uh, we'll be picking up the count again here about 7.35. Everything's looking great. We have no problems. Uh, we've got the ice team out taking a look, and uh, we'll get a report from them when they come back in, but the conditions today aren't conducive to icing, and so that's not a concern. Uh, none of the hardware has any problems associated with it. And the weather's looking great all around, all around the world, uh, both locally and out at the uh, landing site and the road to Spain. So you couldn't ask for a better day all the way around right this minute. Deke, how would you characterize the problems? You've had three delays now on this particular mission going back to the end of September. How would you characterize these delays? What do they mean? Oh, these I think this is, uh, this is normal for a development-type program. You know, we've got a new vehicle here. It's only flown once. and. Uh, it's not surprising that we keep running into little things that didn't quite work right. There's no way to predict them, unfortunately, or we wouldn't have them. But uh, we like to find them on the ground instead of in the air. And uh, so we're, we're not feeling bad about it. Do these glitches, if you will, that you've had here recently, here's the truck, by the way. Uh, where are the astronauts going, Dick? Uh, Joe Engel and Richard Truly here are on their way from somewhere to somewhere, Deke. Where are they Yeah, going? they're coming from the ONC building, which is where the crew quarters are. And that's the VAB, the vertical assembly building you see in the background. And when they get to that, they'll make a right turn, and from there it's about three miles to the pad. It's about a 15-minute ride, and uh, Jack's been that route. I've been that route a number of times. I used to go out with the crews every time they went out. I, my problem is always had to stop right here. Like, they <laughs> go all the way. Is it true you've never really seen a launch, Deke? Never have. I've been in the firing room for every launch except one, and that's when I got to go up myself. So I've never been outside the... I hope you get to the see one one of these days. Well, I hope so. <laughs> well, this is your day, David. This is your day. <laughs> Let's bring in Frank Reynolds of ABC News, who's with us here at the Cape, uh, and Gene Cernan, who is the commander of Apollo 17, been up at the moon. Good morning, guys. Good morning, David. Good morning, David. Gene and I have just been sitting here talking about uh, how astronauts uh, can uh, get themselves uh, prepared for delays and so forth. Gene, uh, of course, has had a few delays. You've been out there uh, sitting all set to go, and then at the last minute, just as they did last week, received the word last second almost, that uh, it just was not to be. How do you adjust to that? These fellows seem to be all right. Well, I think, I, I think like Deke said, you know, you work so hard and so long for something like this. Even if you get down to 30 seconds, it's a little disappointing, but... Uh, a little it, disappointing. It's, it's, 30 it's seconds. It. Look where we are today. I, I don't think Joe and Dick will ever look back at the... Uh, at, at the delay they had is anything important to them after today. Gene, and, may, may I ask you, Gene? Yes. Uh, and Jack also, uh, Schmidt sitting here. Uh, 
despite all the training, despite all the preparation and the hundreds and hundreds of hours in the simulator, as we look at the truck and they're in their spacesuits and they're in the truck on the way to get on the gantry, on their way up there, are you saying that it's just like they're sitting in the living room reading a magazine? No, this builds character, David. This, uh -oh. this is the time that builds character, and particularly like last week when they come down at 31 seconds and hold, that really builds character. Gene, what's, what, are they, what are they thinking about? What are they talking about? Well, I'll tell you what they're thinking about. If I, if I know Joe and Dick, they're thinking about uh, the fact that uh, they're going to have an opportunity today, and they just hope that, that everything works well so that they can go out and do the job that they want to do so badly. Uh, that's what they're thinking about. It, the little nitty-gritty things that caught them last week uh, uh, are the things that they are concerned with. They know they can do their job just given a chance, and, and I know that's just what they're waiting for. There's no real apprehension or real concern at all. You know, everybody feels better, I think, on a nice day. And it certainly is a beautiful day here. We even turned the moon on for him today. That's right. Wasn't that great? Yes, before dawn this morning. But right now, it'd be a perfect time to launch, wouldn't it? I mean, as far as the weather is concerned. If we were going for that 7.30 launch uh, that we talked about and that was set for some time ago. There, there's a different, uh, Frank, a, a sort of a different attitude. I, I believe everyone looks at the weather and the sunshine, and uh, we've solved some problems. As Deke said again, we want to we want to get those problems solved in this program on the ground so they don't have many air. And today, everything. It's Dick's birthday. It's, it's a whole different atmosphere and environment today. Gene, uh, when you and I spoke earlier this morning, uh, you said you flew in in a chopper uh, just a few hours ago. It, describe that experience to us, would you, how you felt just a few hours ago when you flew in in that helicopter? I don't know if I should admit this. The last time I flew over the Indian River in a chopper, I... Uh, you better not admit it. <laughs> I put it in the bottom of the river. This was a little bit better experience today. But it, it was uh, a little nostalgic. You, you look out the left window and there was, uh, there was our home, the moon, uh, hanging out there over the western sky. And then you look out the right and there was a spotlights on a on, on that big white bird and that that's always exciting that's always uh, just a little bit something special puts a few goose pimples in the right places uh, and this morning it was again something special because this flight uh, to see joe and dick go after so much work and uh, so much effort uh, is uh, is a, a very personal uh, uh, sense of satisfaction for me do you guys like to be out there in that Orbiter right now. I don't, I don't think there's anybody who's ever flown or anybody who hasn't flown that wouldn't like to be out there with them. Dick? Yeah, like I said, I've been that route many, many times, and unfortunately only got to the end once, but it's the kind of thing you'd like to do about once a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah, but, you uh, can't believe how, how, how pleasant weightlessness is. It really is a very, very pleasant time. Frank? I was just going to say, uh, I think everybody is kind of impressed by the fact that. Uh, uh, Deke Slayton had to wait so long, and uh, there were so many disappointments in his career, and yet finally uh, along came Apollo Soyuz, and he got to go, uh, got to go up. We see the astronauts arriving now. Uh, they're not yet at the, uh, the actual right launch yeah, site. Yeah, Frank, they're going right by us uh, yes. right now. Uh, this is right down the road right next to us. Uh, we're three and a half miles away from the uh, launch site. We understand. I guess we're as close as, uh, as, close as any of the spectators. Yeah. Is this it? Yeah. Sure. And, and the truck is now just going by with uh, Colonel Joe Engel, test pilot, Richard Truly, U.S. Navy captain, taking two of the services into space with us today. And as we look forward to a launch, everything is go, a launch at 10 o'clock. They got an extra two and a half hours sleep because of the time needed to replace data processing units in the orbiter that were acting up yesterday. And at breakfast, as you heard, there was a birthday now, cake and, and a party for Dick Truly, who is 44 well, years old today. Very widely as they and down uh, when the he breakfast couldn't table, blow out the uh, trick birthday uh, candles uh, that they uh, had rigged uh, up for him, Joe Engel suggested that he pour water on the cake. Obviously, they didn't. Then it was time to suit up in the ejection suits the astronauts will wear during the... This is this shuttle, shuttle launch control, control. T-minus two, two hours, five minutes, hours five minutes and holding just, just about a minute and a half away from resuming the count at that point. The flight, flight crew has reached the uh, clean room and has been given permission to enter the orbiter. Uh, Commander 
Joe Angle, Joe Angle is putting on his helmet, helmet at the at present, present time. time. Dick Truly standing by to put on his as well. The, uh, Dick Truly shook everybody's hand as they reached the white room and uh, smiled at the sign which says, Happy Birthday, Dick. This is Dick Truly's 44th birthday. He was born in Fayette, Mississippi, and uh, graduated from the Georgia Institute of Technology. Joe Engel was born in Abilene, Kansas, and his engineering degree was from the University of Kansas. Uh, even though this is uh, both of the crew members' first flight into space, uh, Joe Engel earned his astronaut win wings uh, back in the 60s when he was the pilot of the X-15 uh, experimental aircraft. 